feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man. I Today, my nature peeps, we are talking about the vampire squid. This time, on Nature Guy X46 presents. Now, right off the bat, we are hitting some scientific controversy. Well, it was scientific controversy. The vampire squid is not a squid. Instead, it belongs to its own family, and it's the only species in this family. A scientific name and the family name will be posted into the video somewhere in here, or at this point. It was incorrectly identified when it was first classified. It was grouped as a type of flapjack octopus. It was Later, it was given the name vampire squid because of the color of the body and the spines on the tentacles. So one way that the vampire squid is not a squid is instead of producing ink to escape its um, enemies, it produces a bioluminescent sticky mucus that glows for about 10 minutes or so, in which time the animal has a chance to escape. Unlike squids and octopuses, this animal cannot change its color. It floats around in the water for food to come to them. Now, they live in the deep sea. Uh, the water where they live varies from around 35 degrees to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. And there is little to no light in this area. They live between 1,958 feet to 3,937 feet below the surface. Oxygen levels may be as low as 5% oxygen saturation. They have blood that is copper-based, and this gives their blood a blue color. But it also allows oxygen in the water to bind more readily with their blood. Another trait of this animal is a slow metabolism. So they don't burn up a lot of calories all at once. And we'll talk more about their diet in a little bit. But first, the body is covered in light producing organs and they actually have a photoreceptor on their head. Now, if you ever see pictures of this animal, and I encourage you to actually look up pictures of this animal, uh, they are not a very big animal. They're only about a foot long. Females are larger than the males. They do not capture live food, which is another difference between squids and vampire squids. They do, however, feed on dead platonic animals and fecal matter that falls from above, or perhaps little bits and pieces of straps that fall from above. Food is sensed with filaments um, that are sent out and the suckers are, or the tentacles suckers are covered in mucus that actually traps the marine snow. That mucus ball is then transferred to the beak where it is eaten. Now they don't have a set breeding season. Instead, fertilized eggs are laid in small masses that float around till they're ready to hatch. Males, by the way, insert a sperm packet into the mantle of the female where they can actually store it until they're ready to lay eggs. Now, females do not guard their eggs or their hatchlings. To protect themselves, they will pull back their tentacles and the webbing, covering up their head and the body. The tips of the tentacles are also covered in fortifers, though that's light-producing organs that produce the glowing mucus. 
Its lineage dates back some 165 million years, based on the fossil record. Thank you for keeping it wild with me, nature peeps. See you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question. Remember to never give up on yourself and always keep learning. Lives are Tuesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 3 p.m. Hope to see you in the next one.